Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. In today's podcast, I want to talk about an epiphany I had recently while featured on a panel. Well, I guessed it on a panel, if you will. I'm going to show it to you in a moment. I want to talk about sort of a bubble popping experience that I even had, right? We're always popping bubbles. We're always having real realizations. We're always having a moment of, oh, okay, click, click. Something is making more sense than it did yesterday. And for me, I had one of those moments and I want to share it with you because I think it will really help. Now, before I jump in, I'm drinking water, honey, and lemon. I've been on a binge. I still am drinking my coffee. But instead of drinking like three cups of decaf, I'm drinking three cups of a little bit of water, honey, and lemon. And it's going a long way. It's very warm, refreshing, and it just makes me feel a lot lighter than drinking so much coffee. So that's what it's been this week. Now, in today's podcast, I was recently featured as a little bit of a short guest on Wick's panel. You know how he does call-ins? After the initial panel, well, I called in and I want to go through that with you today. So it's kind of be it's going to be a little bit of a weird podcast, but I think it's an important conversation to sort of go through with you to understand why I had the epiphany that I had. Now, in conjunction with my past work, I think watching two of my other podcasts might help you. It's the one where it's starting your own bubble and then joining a bubble because in this epiphany, I popped a bubble. I had a realization that made me go, oh, okay, light bulb moment. And since today is Wednesday and I am filming the podcast, posting the podcast, and then I'm going to be on a wig panel tonight, it sort of coincides with this idea of like, what am I doing? Why am I interacting with these bubbles? And it's for tools, knowledge, networking, and it's good conversation. And then of course, it's, you know, a way for us to have and facilitate a conversation. So I'm so excited because I, I love when I have epiphany moments and that's why I keep collabing. That's why I keep talking to people because everyone has something to teach you. And so I'm just so glad that I decided to call into Wix panel that night because I never do that. And I just wanted to do it that night. And it just gave me one of the greatest tools I could have I could have hoped for, you know? So let's get into it. Let's watch it together and talk about that tool that I got that night. So to start us off, this is the beginning of the call-ins. There's a girl or a woman who's gonna come on and I just wanna show you a little bit of her call and how it coincides with the bubble conversation I like to have with people. And really bubbles are just like, cultural beliefs or singular beliefs or an understanding of a reality. So for this woman, she calls in and shares her lived experience of her relationship with women, which is so, so different than mine. I mean, I could not explain to you a differently lived experience. She uses one example in particular, and I'm so excited for you to hear it because I'm dying to know if you also have this experience. Please leave your comments in the sections down below because I would love to know your perspective. So let's give her a go. So I wanted to kind of join. So my personal opinion, um, I have a lot of issues with women specifically, actually. Um, so nice. I, the women against women type of deal where women. Uh, for context, I just realized this panel is called Why Women Are the Problem. Men discuss the women question. And Wick did another panel called Why Men Are the Problem. Women discuss the men question. So this panel is about men talking about women. And then Wick prioritized female callers to give their opinion on the subject. So she's the first guest on. Women are a problem for women. I think Or one of the guests. I don't actually know if she was first. A massive issue. Um, because women are absolutely awful to other women and it makes other women act awful to everyone else, including men. Can you and give us an example? So interesting, the guy in the pink background, he's like nodding and like enthusiastically. Just keep in mind, right? Like she isn't wrong that some women are awful to some women. I've definitely had some pretty bad interactions with women, but I would say I've had more positive than negative in my lived experience. Example, can you be specific? Let's say you're in a Call of Duty lobby, all right? You're playing Call of Duty as a woman. I'm speaking from experience, okay? You go in a lobby, there's another woman there. They're like, oh, this fucking fagly fucking bitch. Blah, 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 blah. Like, worse than what the men would do. And you're just like... Really? Ooh. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you try to... I, I can't tell this guy's just in nodding enthusiastically to say like, oh, yes, good point. Like, is he an enthusiastic listener like I am? Or is he actually agreeing? I can't tell talk to them and they're like oh don't talk to me you're a fucking bitch and then it's like okay do they really do they yes really do they that? fucking do yeah or if you so even wow. if you go i guess in he's agreeing women's bathroom at times there the people women will look at you at times and just be weirder like 
hey, can, can let's say you need a tampon or whatever. They're like, no, get the fuck away from me. Figure it out yourself. Like, I've had <laughs> issues like that. See, okay, that's the lived experience I want to talk to. She says when she's in the women's restroom and she needs like a tampon, the women are like, figure it out yourself. And all of my years going into female bathrooms or gender neutral bathrooms because I belong to queer communities, I've never had this problem. Women have always been gracious, amazing, thoughtful. I've made best friends in bathrooms. I am shocked at her lived experience, but that's why I say we all live in bubbles. We're all having a different experience in life. And then we generalize and project that onto a populace. When we say society, we don't really mean groups of people in areas. We mean the world. For some reason, we think we're talking about the world and we're not. We're not even talking about the whole United States. So when she tells this story and she's having a very real lived experience, what is she talking about, right? And and what is this experience that she's having? It's real. It's valid. It's legit. I'm, I'm sure it happened. I don't need to doubt the story, but I need to tell her like this isn't everyone's lived experience. My lived experience is quite opposite. Again, I have been that woman to give out a tampon. I've been a woman to receive a tampon. I've been a woman who's just like I've had – so many positive experiences with women that I remember at one point in my life when I was younger believing that male friends were better than female friends. And that came from, I think, internalized misogyny from the women around me. And even the women in my life now who are much older who will say like, don't, aren't men like almost better friends? All of them have female friends that they love. So I think it's just a narrative that we learned growing up in certain bubbles and we perpetuated it or we had one bad experience it experience and projected it or we had many bad experiences and projected it but just like we don't want to generalize men and say like all men are bad because every woman I know knows a rapist or a molester right like we want to say that men aren't a monolith and women aren't a monolith but we can't do that because our pain comes out our bias shows we have bias it's just a part of being a human being so as I'm listening to this and I was, you know, in the audience listening, I was like, oh my gosh, that's such a different lived experience. I want to, I want to discuss that. I want to come and talk about that. And so I end up jumping on later in the stream just after her. Hello, everyone. You How's got a camera doing? for us? Or? Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm literally in my after stream look. Thank okay. you. Okay. Hi. <laughs> what you got for us? Okay, so I just wanted to say a few things. One, I love how different experiences just map onto different people. Like I've had great experiences in female bathrooms, but not everybody has the same life. I just wanted to share from a more individualistic perspective, like in my marriage, gender plays like little to no role. Obviously we know we're men and women, but when it comes to who does what, who earns what, who it doesn't matter. We're putting in both 100% to make the team succeed. So for us, like in our marriage, even though like we're obviously men or women, it just, it doesn't seem to matter when it comes down to being successful. So I think it's more about efficiency and falling in love. I feel like this whole panel, like, is anyone in love? Like, I'm in love. I found the greatest person on the planet, and he wants to spend his life with me. So no offense, in some ways, a woman. That's, that's kind I'm sorry? of easy to do. You're also a young lady. That's very easy to do. I'm a young lady, he says. A young lady, they say. Dude, find a man that wants to love you. That's like, that's like How breathing air. How old do you think I am? What's a young lady, right? Because like in my bubble, I'm in my 30s. Like the fact that I was 33 was like a, a red flag to some people, but not my, my not my familiar bubble. Like my family bubble, like it's not a complete red flag to be unmarried. It's more of a red flag to get married and divorced. So you'd rat. So it would be. So in my family bubble, my religious, cultural Assyrian bubble, it would be better to be never married than be married and divorced, right? So. I didn't grow up thinking I had to get married. I grew up thinking I should get married because it's like what Jesus would want. But I'm not religious, right? I left the church. So what is a young lady? Like he calls me a young lady, which if I go outside of my family bubble and think about societally where I grew up, like in Orange County and um, like Riverside County, San Diego County, I'm thinking a young lady is under 30 because usually there's a stereotype that over 30 women are old. And so, I mean, there are women on TikTok right now, like mourning their 20s, which is a very interesting concept again. And so it's interesting what we define as a young lady, right? It doesn't matter how old you are. You're probably 34. It's still easy. He's right. I am 34. What you're doing right you, now you, is the thing that pisses people off. You're dismissing women's emotions. Mm -hmm. She's just... Here's our little Smith. I love Smith. I call him little and that sounds really condescending, but it's he's literally like my age. <laughs> We're like the same age. He's like 30. I'm 34. But, you know, Taz expressing I, I, an emotion. I, 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 you're saying I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. And I'm going to tell I'm going to tell you why. Right. 
because you came in and and to be fair, you said this is my individual experience and that's mm -hmm. fine and that's great. The problem is if we're talking about general, if we're talking about multiple people, if we're talking about everybody getting that same result, we can't just say- Okay, well, so this is the moment my brain is starting to go, why would everyone get the same results? Like my brain is like, I already knew that. I already knew there was this idea in people's heads that they think everybody would be out here getting the same results. But in my mind, like no one gets the same result in life. No one has the same life. I don't know anyone in my life who has the same outcome. Some of my friends are single. Some of my friends are partners. Some of my friends live with their partners. Some of my friends are married. Some of my friends have multiple lovers. Some of my friends are poly. Some of my friends are like nobody has the same result. So the idea that we are all going to get the same result, which is the result I got, it's such a weird idea because I went into falling in love knowing I might not get married. I... I let go of the idea that I was going to get married automatically as if it was owed to me. You know how they say when you stop looking for it, it comes. It feels like sometimes when people are talking about we're all going to get the same outcome. Why? Why? Now, because I grew up Catholic, I also grew up with the, uh, the examples of people who did not get married, who became priests or nuns, who dedicated their life to serving the poor, who dedicated their life to something else. So getting married is not the assumed result for everybody. It is not the assumed goal for everybody. So what bubble are they coming from where they think this is the assumed goal for everybody? Well, this worked out for me. I did well. Here we go. We need to find a way to make it so that multiple people can get the same results and some reasonable capacity. So you found a guy who loved you and gender doesn't play a role. Fantastic. Here's the problem, right? I'm six foot one. Women look at me. They want me to protect them. Too bad, so sad. And everyone will tell me I have to eat that. I say, okay, I'll eat that. So then I say, all right, then why can't a woman be kind and nice to me? Smith says I'm in. So obviously this guy, God bless him, has problems, right? Like even the way he's talking, it's like he's bitter and resentful. And I think that's fair. He's probably had a lived experience that contributed to that reaction. But I also think that that's the problem is like, this idea that I'm owed something is a dilemma. Whether it's coming from men or women, it's a it's a gross. It's gross. It's icky. It's not attractive. Thinking you're entitled to something is just not attractive, right? Now, um, having boundaries, having standards, being kind to people, that's just something you should do because you have good character. And I think having good character is sort of missed on people. And maybe it's, again, because I grew up a little religious, a lot of religious, let's be real, or I grew up listening to fables or talking about like morals or ethics within children's stories, you know the good guy in the story and the bad guy and the good guy isn't saying things like what he's saying. You know what I mean? Title to women's emotions. Am I? I mean, the woman can be entitled to expect me to protect her. I'm just supposed to eat that. And I literally say I'm fine with eating that. Why is there- See, I'm eating that. I'm accepting it. I'm, the bubble is telling me I have to live this way. So fine, I'll accept it, but I want something in return. Or you could do something different. If you're so resentful over the standard and you're still single, why don't you do something different, right? Why don't you be an individual? Why are you being a sheep or a part of the herd or a part of the flock? I don't blame people for wanting to be a part of the community because they have structured community consistency, right? So he's not wrong for default thinking, I just need a community that sees me or I need a shift community to see me. But my suggestion is always like, why don't you just do something different? And I know a lot of people hear me say this, here I am, jumping into their bubble while they're trying to discuss how to get society in a direction. And I'm saying, what if, what if you just did something different? And I'm the annoying voice in the background, but I'm also trying to be the lived experience for people that if it worked for me, something similar could work for you, but you have to know yourself. I think sometimes we run the risk, at least, you know, Dr. K would say in the West, we run the risk of being so societally based, even though the ironic assumption is that we're individually based only arrogantly so only in in mantra are we only in uh reputation are we individually based if you're a conservative you're not an individual you're an individual within a society but you're not a specific consciousness like i describe right you're you you belong to a, a bubble you belong to a community you have to adhere you have to vote a certain way you have to adhere to rules and and uh, and and a certain gender expectation you know you're in the community which isn't bad but it means you're an individual within the community but your individuality is stifled by the herd the tribe which is fine i'm not moralizing it i'm saying it's good for some people but what if you're not that person what if you're in a community that isn't 
helping you? Well, you could do Eastern philosophy and talk about the consciousness, the relationship you're having with self, right? But that's so hard for people because people always say, you know, they think they can't do it for some reason. So the irony, right, is like America talks about how it is more individualistic and less community based, but it's your whole identity is based off your skin color, your social identity, your orientation, your religion, your gender. So everything in America is individuals within an identity. In other parts of the world, it's communities that adhere to the individual consciousness within the community. So if, you know, Dr. K was just listening to him on Ice Coffee Hour talk about this. If you go to India and you practice meditation with them, they're teaching you how to know the consciousness, your actual self right? But they're more community-based compared to America. If you go to America, they're more community-based through the identity of the group identity, which is this is just a fascinating um, difference in how we're experiencing these words called individual and community. So I'm a Syrian and we would have group dinner together every night at home. We would come together as a community and eat together, unlike my some of my friends that would like go to their bedrooms and eat, right? But even when we came together as a Syrian at the dinner table as a family, it was as in a Catholic community or in a Syrian community or the the family that I was community. And my identity was associated with my family. And then eventually I had to decide or you have to decide who am I if I'm just not like if I'm not just my family name. And that question is a different question that I see lacking in these conversations. But also, who am I to come into these bubbles and say, be like my bubble? All I'm trying to do is come into these bubbles and say, you can live differently if you want, but if this is working for you, great. But at the rate people are complaining, at the rate people seem unhappy, at the rate people seem unjoyful, I'm trying to be a voice that says, what if you did something different? But the problem is, is you can't be like this man, God bless him, like you cannot be this bitter, you cannot be this cranky and then say, well, you're saying it worked for you, but it's not going to work for me. Well, nothing's going to work for you if you don't know yourself. So if you kind of look at it, so this is the thing about meditation is we as human beings, some of us figure out how to attain one pointedness of the mind that a lot of human beings will figure out. And the key thing to understand about meditation is that it's a state, I mean, not meditation, but mm. what we're going for is a state of consciousness. And there right. are many ways to attain that state of consciousness. Uh, tantric sex is one, meditation is another, flow state. So is that your biggest takeaway of going to India was, was simply the point of focus leading to happiness? That's a very core fundamental. It may be the biggest takeaway. I'd have to think about that a little bit. But I would say the first thing that I learned that I really fell in love with is like, this was a course in myself. So we formally study mathematics. We formally study all kinds of stuff, like even psychology. People who study psychology don't become better human beings. Like you can take a course on addiction, right? Mm -hmm. You can even get a PhD in addiction. It does, it literally does not, it's not the same as addiction treatment. So learning something subjectively and learning something like informationally are like two different things. And so the coolest thing about India is this was a course in myself. Where do my desires come from? How can I conquer desire? Like literally, how can you control any part of your mind? How can you, con can you control desire? Where does happiness come from? Where do my desires come from? Like, where do my thoughts come from? Why can't I wake up? On some days I can wake up at 8 a.m. and go to Spanish class. On other days I can't. What's the difference? And this is what I found so frustrating is no one could give me that answer. And I even looked at science, right? And science will say like circadian rhythm, but how do you fix that? Like we don't have a course in the self. Like literally how does your digestion work? What determines whether you're constipated or not constipated? We don't teach people these things. And so what I loved in India is suddenly I was, I, I was in a class that taught me about all of the things that were fucking my life. So no wonder the community dictates your happiness and maybe you're just not part of the right community. But let's keep listening because the Arab guy with the pink background, he actually chimes in with something related to Arab culture that I think I can speak to as well. So let's keep listening. Resistance for me then saying, well, why can't she treat me well? Why can't she be nice to me? So the problem is, Brittany, it's like you found, and this is great. I'm not even against you for this. This is your life. And honestly, if more people wanted an efficient way to be in relationships, parent without gender, by all means, that's their prerogative. The issue is gender, social expectations for men, we still have to adhere to it. We can't just say, I'm not going to make more money than women. Well, that's the problem. Why not? Who told you that? What bubble are you in? Lots of men do that. Lots of men that I know do not make as much as the women they're dating or at all because they're stay-at-home partners. 
So if you're adhering to the social pressure, who's the community that's giving it to you and why are you going along with it? Are you not able to think for yourself? Are you too scared to do something different? Are you happy where you are and you actually don't want to change? Are you just upset that you're not making more money? Like what is it you are doing, right? You are doing because your community isn't the world, right? Now, I understand you might be afraid that people might criticize your relationships. You're afraid to go against the herd. You're afraid to do something different. That's fine. But I'm here to suggest that it might actually be the thing that's missing from your life, right? Because that's what I had to do. That's what a lot of people have to do. That's what a lot of my audience does is we look at our communities and say, we love you. We'll be a good citizen. I'll pay my tax. I won't litter. I'll drive safely. I'll do all the things I'm supposed to do generally. But when it comes to my own personal life, I want to make sure that I'm living the life that fulfills my joy, even if it makes other people uncomfortable, because as long as it's sane and reasonable and healthy and kind, you know, who are you to tell me not to do it? My whole, my only limitation is like, make sure it's healthy. It's not what lifestyle you're living. It's how you're living it, right? It's about the healthy, you know? Our pool well, of I ladies mean, dramatically not? shrinks. It's well, I think that's the we, issue. We right? have I, made it extremely well, we gotta, difficult we on gotta, that one point alone. We gotta, we gotta let Brittany respond. So, Brittany, go ahead. I think the yeah. issue is like, why do you like for me? I think like we're evolved animals on a planet. So, I assume that if you find your soulmate or someone you're compatible with to that extent, to call it like a very special relationship, it's rare. And if you're lucky, you get to do that. Most people settle into what they find is like a good enough relationship, which is fine. But I'm saying that no one's owed a relationship and I knew that my whole life. And I think I was raised that way by my parents who said it was better to be single than to marry the wrong person. So I think it's values, right? Like why are you dating people? So my husband doesn't adhere to gender expectations in the same way, right? Like I'm the breadwinner in our relationship. It makes sense for us. It works. His mother's the same. She's the breadwinner. Like so in my family, we're a Syrian. Like a lot of the women work. So I guess it just, it's like whatever works for your family, whatever works for you. But like cultures around the world are different. Not everybody's the same. So these gender roles, they're societal. So like you need to move societies, hang out with different people or be an anomaly, be the exception. Change the standard for yourself, right? That's how I look at it. Just change society. It's so easy, Zerfi. Well, change not See, I love the Wick joke. That's like, because I actually do get that as like a criticism, like just change society. You can't change society. Society needs to change itself. You can't change people. People decide to change. You can bully people into pretending they're different than they are. But for people to truly change in the deepness of their consciousness, their souls, their, their themselves, they have to truly transform. They have to want that change, right? And it starts with acknowledging that you need the change. I think people get so distracted with like saving society that they never have to work on themselves, which is why society suffers. Because society is a bunch of people who are not working on themselves. And I don't blame people for not doing it. It is much easier to complain. It is much easier to blame the world or blame somebody else. But of course, the irony is like the world at large is a reflection of us at large. Like we make the world. We decide the constructs. We decide what people, quote, ought to do. We decide what society should look like. Like it didn't just come out of anywhere. We made it. And so the question is, are you willing to do it a different way? Are you willing to break generational curses? Are you willing to say, maybe we should try it a different way? I think we should be kind and thoughtful and giving and warm and considerate to our neighbors. And I think that looks different to every culture. In some cultures, it's more considerate and thoughtful to not bother people as you walk next to them on the sidewalk. In other cultures, it's more proper to make eye contact and make small make small talk. So there's, there's no reason to moralize this. It's only a thing of, do I belong in which society? And yes, is it very difficult to like leave the family you were born in and to realize like you were born into a family that doesn't vibe with you? Yes, that's very difficult. But I promise you the other side of it is much better. It's better for your family. It's better for you. It's better for the society that you move with your joy. And you can still make contact with your family. You can still say I love you. You can still send Christmas cards. But it is better for you to migrate to a different place, a different part of society, than to stay unhappy in another part of it. Because it will show. It will show at work. It will show in your relationships. It will show in the way you communicate with yourself. Not change society, make your, make your change own society. societies, it's, not change societies, like change society. Like she's move. saying make your own, find your own group, find mm -hmm. your own tribe, and then you'll meet the yeah. people that agree with you. People are constantly telling me that I don't fit the the like masculine ideal and stuff. Aaron, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even understand why. Brittany just told me earlier, and but like, I don't have any trouble finding women though. Mm. 
That's that's beautiful, Smith. I don't. Okay, so it's because Smith is a certain category of man, and the kind of girl that dates him are the kind of girls who don't date masculine men. Not all women want masculine men. I myself find myself little to not attracted to masculine men. Like hyper masculine men are not interesting to me. And so again, like that is just your category. You have to know your category. This generalization, like women want masculine men. Which women wear? Because yes, some women do. And I think that's great. I'm not moralizing it. Have fun. Find that man. But for the rest of us, like that's not interesting, right? That is not who we're looking for. And no one on this panel is what I would call a hyper-masculine man. No offense. Like when I think of a masculine, masculine man, I think of somebody with muscles, hitting the gym, um, you know, not very groomed, like in their masculine, like in their masculine. I don't really think of soft boys on the internet doing debate panels because that's just not what the masculine men in my life are doing. They don't have the time. Even, you know, Andrew Tate taught, like he really gravitates on this line where some people think he's not very masculine and some people think he's very masculine. So it's also subjective based off of culture. Everyone's going to have a different relationship with what they think is masculine or not. You know, um, it is what it is, right? So again, when I'm coming into this bubble, I'm having this epiphany of like, I'm sitting here and, and I'm invading their space and I'm not trying to invade their space. I really am not. And I don't want to ruin the panels for them. I don't want to ruin the discourse for them. But I truly think they have the wrong answers. Even for the whole of society, I think the wrong answer is blaming other people and the right answer is blaming yourself. The wrong answer is blaming society. The right answer is looking at yourself, right? If blame is too shamey of a word, look, turn the mirror on yourself. It is about you. It's not about the world. The world is a reflection of what we've put into it, right? It is the world's karma, you know? So again, individual. It's <laughs> great that you guys don't have troubles. That's, I, I can't argue with that. The problem yes, is- Yes, but he is also having an individual experience and he doesn't get it. We're having individual success and he's having individual failure. And that's his fault in the same way that my success is my fault. I'm only successful because I did the work. I only used to fail because I was failing. Like, yes, you have trauma. Yes, you need to acknowledge it. Yes, you have hardships. Yes, you have like heart, you know, things that are working against you in society because society is cultural. But that's why you have to be an independent thinker and move around the obstacles, even though it's very difficult. And look, not everybody gets handed the perfect set of tools. You have to gather those tools. But I will tell you, as people in a very privileged first world country, our problems are very specific and we have a much more access to tools than other people around the world. I mean, just to have the money to own a computer or be on the internet alone, third of the world doesn't even have internet, never had internet. So the fact that we're on the internet, the fact that this is what we're doing for a living, the fact that we're streamers, the fact that we do this, even if it's not full time, the fact that we're here and we have time to spend complaining about the fact that we're single, okay, that is a privilege. To have the time to complain that you're single is a privilege, right? And that's what you're doing with your time, complaining. And that's what's wrong with society. Complaining instead of like actually problem solving. Is There's when groups of men that do. The problem is there are women right now who have three different baby dads, okay? Right now, there's children growing up without their- Those are bubbles as well, right? If you look in your own personal life, how many people do you know who even use the word baby daddy? So I grew up in a bubble where like baby daddy is not a word you ever use. Nobody had a baby daddy. You had a baby out of wedlock with a boyfriend or girlfriend and you did your best to raise that baby. Sometimes you got married. Sometimes you didn't. But nobody was a baby daddy. A baby daddy is a specific cultural term that belongs to a certain bubble. And that's fine. I'm not moralizing it. But I'm saying that that comes from that specific bubble with that specific problem. Other bubbles aren't having that same relationship with that term, right? Fathers, right now, it's not about you did well. I'm glad. But how do we get other people to do well? We how don't. Do we get it's not our responsibility. They family? have to figure it out. They okay. have to decide and to be I love healthy it. enough and that's, to change and that's their beautiful. life. And that's beautiful. We just say, oh, this is their responsibility. So we just it can't is. do anything. Whatever. Well, it's their body, their life, their finances. Like if they want a healthy life, they need to do the work to be healthy. Yeah, but there's okay, social so we just, influences. We just don't care. We don't give that are so, pushing people in different well, directions. I want to give like, it to, we Tom, want Tom. to There are social influences that are pushing people in a direction. All of life will. Your parents will. Every, your mental health will. Your genetics will. 
Again, everyone has that problem. It's a universal problem. I had that problem. You had that problem. So that's the dilemma. They keep hearing that I never had that problem. Do you think I am so special? I never had that problem. I also had that problem. I need you to really hear me say this. I also had that problem. You think I didn't fight society? You think as a woman who makes the money, I didn't have to fight society? You think as a woman who's more in her masculine, I didn't have to fight society? You think as a queer woman, I didn't have to fight society? You think I've never had to fight for my place in the world? I'm telling you, you can do it. And you're telling me, no, you just don't understand. You don't have it as hard as I do. Okay. Yes. Everyone has it harder or easier than you. You right now who thinks you have it so hard, somebody has it harder than you. And they're going to look at you and they're going to think the same thing. You don't understand how hard it is for me. Exactly. Because it's not about you. It's about you. Get it? It's not about them. It's about you. Don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to the version you either want to be or the version you plan to be or the version you hope to be. Or the version you, I, you know, the ideal version of you. Live for 10 years from now you and for the present you, right? It's a practice. It's saying, where do I want to be in 10 years? Enjoy the present and live for the future. Don't live in the future, live in the present, but invest in the future, right? So when they say, oh, good for you, Brittany, like, I, you know, you're different. I'm not different, except in the results. I'm exceptional, right? Apparently, that's what everyone keeps telling me. But I was never, I wasn't born that way, okay? I wasn't given that life. I had to make the decision to pull away from my family. I had to make the decision to make my own name. I had to make the decision to move countries. I had to make the decision to do what I wanted to do. I had to make the decision and I make the decision every day because I'm still facing society. I face society right now. You face society right now. You never stop facing society. You never stop having the influence of society. You only ever have the the free will to evoke to do something regardless of society. And that comes from a relationship with your consciousness. Let's keep going. To try to fix those things. Yeah, for sure. But again, so are you guys saying like I'm so special and I'm such an exception that I beat all of society to have my dream life? Or did I radically uh, you're accept? You're also a woman. No offense. No, 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 but no, no. Like okay. You, you found a man. Husband? You're a what woman. What about my husband? He also found a woman he, doing what he, he found wanted. You. He found the... Yeah, well, it's one person though. Like no, 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 lots no, of women. What about my parents? What about all my cousins? What about my siblings? What about like know, everyone well, in my bubble? That people can't find each other. But the like a lot of the dynamics that you're talking about where you're taking it out. Like I am a masculine dude. I like feminine women. Like we are... In my bubble, Tom is not a masculine dude. He's somewhat masculine. He's more masculine than feminine, but he's like 40, 60, right? He's not 99% masculine, right? And that's the problem. Everyone's bubble is so different. Everyone's culture is so different. Even for Arab men, most people think, some people think Arab men are very feminine because they get their eyebrows threaded and they're very groomed and grooming is a sign of femininity. And so even Tom being very well groomed is kind of a signal of femininity. And there's something ironic about that. And so I need you guys to pay attention to those nuances of like Tom thinks he's a very masculine man. And that's fine. Smith thinks he's a masculine man in some ways, but like everyone's masculine, everyone's feminine on a spectrum, right? Everyone has that within themselves. So again, when we're having this conversation, it's not to diminish. It's not to you know, cancel out your relationship with yourself. It's to say, what am I truly? And then how does that matter when I'm engaging with different people? So again, like it, they keep treating me like I am not a person who started off just like everyone else. And I think that's the mistake we're making. So when we see people on the other side, we're like, that can't be me because they're different. They did something different. We all are different, but we're all the same are going to be radically different we're not we're going to have expectations of each other we're going to have roles that we both want to fit into and that we both want to fulfill um Mm -hmm. so you're like you're taking a lot of the things that is normal for the standard person i know but my parents are traditional religious people my parents have traditional gender role my siblings do in some ways people can't find each other i i right like i just want to specify like if you're single there has to be a reason. Either you're not finding your person and that's better to be single or you're not a viable candidate in the dating market, but like, who cares? Like, if you think it's so important to be partnered- well, those people care. Well, those people society care cares. because they, well, no, society doesn't care. In general, society I think- Society should care. If you believe in evolution and biology, then this, mm-hmm. the, the way the world has gone is evolution and biology. 
So mm -hmm. yeah. like, uh, just that's the thing that I don't understand about these arguments about like society care, society cares. Yes, society cares because of what we've done. But if we're adapting forward using biology and evolution, then the world is exactly the way it is. You either have to adapt to the changes or you can complain through the transformations, which you will. And then your genet genetics will die off. If you're single and unmarried and not procreating, that was a part of evolution, right? Like, like you could make that argument. I would say it was more or less a part of your inability to introspect. I would argue that you are better than your evolution in biology, that you can evoke free will, that you can have a relationship outside of the basics, but you also have to add to yourself. You have to have that relationship. But if you believe that hard in evolution in society, then you not procreating is a part of that reality of your genetics aren't going to continue forward. You should be even more relieved that you don't have to look for a partner or you can work on yourself and decide in a more meditative self-aware way that you might not find that partner and you're still going to live a joyful life and not be bitter and complain on the internet. E evolution isn't a value judgment. Interject. It's what works and what doesn't work. It's, well, it's not about, it's not well, what doesn't doesn't work is based off societal expectation and culture, right? No. This is what he, so if it's not working for you, it, you're the problem. Pay attention. If it's not working for you, you're the anomaly. You're the problem. Now, you can fight to change society, which as a queer person, I recommend, or you can move societies to a place that's more queer friendly, right? But like you are the problem and you are also the solution. You are the problem and you are also the solution because that's what being the different person does in society. It allows society to shift and change based off the needs of the unique. And that's what's so cool about being another is that you are the opportunity for the world to consider changing. Because if you never existed in the first place, why would the world change for you? The fact that you exist is the world's opportunity to adapt and change, to continue forward into a new way of existing. Humans have created. Except this it doesn't is what we work produced. because we're, we're literally not well, what is reproducing working? our why society do... currently. We're literally Production. below replacement rate. It's not- Exactly. Maybe that was the way evolution was supposed to go. Maybe we are supposed to, over time, as a species, die out. Other animals do. Why wouldn't we? Other animals die out, mostly because of human intervention, but even in nature, why wouldn't we also go extinct? The idea that we aren't going to go extinct and the sign that we are is bad is because we're afraid to die. Not because we don't understand that eventually we will go extinct, right? Like eventually we would have to. I assume so. Why would we assume that we would always be here? That's such a weird perspective. Well, it's I don't, not working. I think we're evolving. Women past are that upset. Point, we need to reproduce. Women what are if complaining what if about the men they what choose. What if we're I, going to evolve to have less point. children, we right? If that's what's happening in society. Like, that's a funny concept, but literally in more educated societies, we are not choosing to reproduce because we're thinking about resources. We're thinking about the ability to sustain this life. Too much of the world is starving right now. Too much of America is starving for us to justify creating new life we can't support. 500,000 babies are in foster care right now who don't have families to support them. So yes, it would make sense that we would evolve over time to not produce for life we cannot sustain. Or maybe we can go a more basic evolution route, which is like have 10 kids, even though nine will die, right? But I just think we're more evolved past that in terms of our intellect that we don't have to do that. We don't have to have 10 babies we can't support. We can have one that we can support, but you have to have the education and the tools and you have to adapt. Education is we're having less babies. So maybe we're supposed to evolve mm -hmm. to have less babies. Okay. I want to, I want to interject real quick when we say that society doesn't care if you're single or not. Um, I know from experience that's not true. Uh, in the military, for example, I'll give you an example from the military. If you are married in the military, you get so many benefits that single people just don't. So this argument is not, to me, it's not that society cares if you're married. Society incentivizes you to be married because they want you to make babies to pay taxes, right? Society wants you, especially in a capitalistic country like America, they want to incentivize you having a baby so they can pay tax dollars. So it's not that they value in a moral or pure sense. It's that they value you as worker bees. And if you want to contribute to that, you can do that. But I'm not having kids just so they can pay taxes. Like, I'm not going to have a kid just so they can work. Like, I'm not sitting here thinking we need to make worker bees for the capitalistic, like, country that is. I'm not thinking that way. I just don't think that way. I think more like you're going to make love and have a family because that's beautiful. But I am not sitting here thinking, let's have babies so they can pay taxes. Right. And that's why they get incentivized. 
It's not because they value the family. America doesn't value marriage. They don't, it doesn't value the family. It doesn't care about the family. If it did, it wouldn't have, we wouldn't have the situation we're having right now with sustainability, grocery prices, rent prices, that America doesn't value the family. America incentivizes you to get married and have children, not for your benefit, but for the taxpaying benefit, which is, again, maybe governments are going to do what governments do, and maybe that is the most efficient thing to keep us the number one country in the world, and maybe that is what we need to do. But the question is, what if we didn't do that? As a population, if we don't continue to do that, America naturally will crumble and a new country will rise and new people will live there and they'll have that culture, you know, because America is not always going to exist. It can't. It never does. Right. So, again, living in Europe and living in a place with Roman ruins and ancient history all around me, it's pretty clear that like that's just how life goes. But it's like this fear, this denial. And I understand it is scary to think you might live in a world that will change overnight. Good news. It rarely changes overnight. It's slow and steady and it makes sense that it's happening, but it's this fear and not you're lacking this like radical acceptance that it's happening. You all talk about evolution and biology, but you are so afraid of it. It means to change. Things will change. That's what evolution is. Things will change. Biology adapts. We adapt. So again, I just want to encourage you for this limited time you have on earth, you're 70 to 90 years if you're lucky. You know, I just want to encourage you to consider living a life that fulfills your joy instead of living a life that makes you a number and a cog. Now, of course, I believe in society. Like I said, be a good neighbor, be kind, be thoughtful, but mostly be those things to yourself, you know, not just to society. Yeah. Um, if you are single in the military and they need someone to work on the weekends, guess who they're choosing? Not the married people with kids. They're choosing you. Like if uh, you get financial benefits for being married, so much so, in fact, that a lot of people will have mm -hmm. uh, military spouses in basic or other, th not basic, but yeah. uh, the. I know I have four military brothers. I'm aware. Uh, I forget the term for when it, they're in like like when they got when they're in training and things like that when they're in mm -hmm. uh in training for their job and look as somebody who like got married it helped with immigration it helps with my life it validates me in society I understand that like it validates us as a family so it says to the government we are a family even though we're not blood related that's what marriage does it says to the world we are a unit and we're committing to one another and that's really beneficial it's still about love we didn't get married. We got married because we're in love and we want to signal to the world in the way that it understands legally that we are a family unit and we are together, right? So that's about efficiency, not because they value our marriage. The government doesn't care if I'm in love. The government just wants to know who to tax and like how to like associate us with legal paperwork. Job and things like that. They'll they'll just get married just so that they can get those benefits. Like the amount of benefits mm -hmm. in, in, just alone in the military that you get for being uh, so if you're upset about that, get fake married, but like, don't get fake married. It's illegal. But like, I don't want these benefits. Like, I understand. I had a friend once say, um, it's frustrating that like married people get like wedding gifts. What do single people get? And I'm like, you get a housewarming, throw a housewarming. But again, why do you want people to give you stuff? Like, again, I don't, depending on how you want to form society. Okay. People will get benefits. Look, if you don't want married people to have benefits, don't encourage people to have kids. Because why would they need those benefits if they're not having kids, right? Like the idea of giving them the benefits is so they will have children. So if you don't want people to get married in order to have children, don't give them the benefits. Or just let people live a life that makes sense. But again, America isn't a society that's interested in the family. It's not here to protect the American citizen in, in, a, in a joyful way. It's here to like make you work 80 hours a week so you can pay taxes. Which again, I'm an American. I get it. I work seven days a week. I know. I'll do whatever it takes to survive, right? I'll live my life. But when I'm not surviving, like job, shelter, food, water, I would like to live my life, please. I would like to chill, right? So I work so I can chill, right? I don't live to work. I work so I can chill. Part of a family are immense. This also I mean, plays out on the larger society as a whole. You get so many tax benefits. Married people get preferential treatment. And we can say that and we can argue that that might be for a very good reason. I might agree with you. But married people get so much preferential treatment that single people just don't. Yeah, I could never imagine caring about this. 
And my brain does not work this way at all. I do not care. I think that, again, society, at least... Because when you think like this, then you're always thinking about... Unless it's like legally, like, of course, like we want to get people married if they're gay. We want to get people married if they're straight. But we want the marriage thing to be universal, not like single people, married people. Like, again, I don't know. It it feels a little bit like blaming, right? It feels a little bit like blaming. If you don't like this in society, change it. For me, I'm indifferent. So I'm indifferent. When I was single, I never cared about these things. If you care about it, do something about it. Western society values that and will support that much, much more than being single. We look at single men. Single men are like the worst of the worst. They're treated as incels. They're called incels in a lot of cases. Well, if you're bitter and you're angry and you're dangerous and the statistics support that, right? None of the single men in my bubble are considered weird unless you act weird like this guy in the bottom right corner. If you're going to act entitled, if you're going to act bitter, if you're going to act like I'm doing women a favor, then yeah, you're going to be treated weirdly, dude. And also men are the ones who perpetuate that stereotype against men. It was men my whole life growing up who told me men are dangerous. It was men my whole life who proved to me that men were dangerous, right? So again, that association we have with men is also based off statistics and it's based off of their own their own description of themselves as a sex. So you need to heavily consider how much you are perpetuating that stereotype. In this panel alone, it's proving that same point that single men are an issue because you're bitter and alone, specifically the guy in the right corner. Cases, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're just treated like trash and disposable. Look at how they treat me. It's just and that's yeah, but single women also have this. Single women have podcast after podcast after podcast telling them they're used up, they're gross, their vaginas have cobwebs, they're disgusting. Who would love you? After 30, you're dead. You might as well die. Like what it, we all have this in different bubbles. You're just upset that it's happening to you because you're so you're so dependent on the validation of people who were never going to see you as a person anyways. And I'm saying, what if you did something different? So look, I don't want to be that girl who's always going into these bubbles and I'm like, just do it my way. But literally your way isn't working. So in five to 10 years, if you're still having the same conversations on these panels, your way isn't working. My way is provable working. Because one, if you're in my category of person, my audience is proof of that. My callers are proof of that. But also, like, it's about you. And then my life is proof of it, right? You can see it in my life. What I was doing before wasn't working, so I changed it. I changed it till it worked. If they are still having the same, and I'll predict it now, okay, five to 10 years from now, if the same group of people are having the same group of conversations, let's hope they're not, obviously, but then something isn't working, right? You can stay stagnant. You can do that. That's your prerogative. That's your right. I believe in your right to do that, but it is your choice. It's like or how people, people, are, people, or, I'm not even wrong. people will probably treat you woman, more. By a certain age, oh, you'll, they'll treat you like a red flag once you get to like... Who are these people, right? And what are you doing with your life? Yes, some people will treat you this way. Absolutely. But that's the people you're surrounding yourself with, right? 28, mm -hmm. 29, 30, if you're still not married or in like a long-term committed relationship, you are just now a red flag. So yeah. like there's uh, people and your parents will look at you like- what But I think that is a stereotype that society perpetuates. You have to break the stereotype for people to understand that like you are the anomaly, right? It's like, it's like when- um. It's like when men are like, I want a virgin woman. And then they fall in love with a girl who's had sex with eight people. And they're like, oh, wait, you like defied my expectation. Or everyone has a different idea of values and what they think is right and what they think is good. I know plenty of women that have been single for a long time, 10 years plus. I know lots of men who've been single for 10, 20 years plus. And genuinely, it's it's just life. They're not going to settle for people they don't like. And they don't like very many people. And they found a way to find joy in being single because their whole life doesn't revolve around being partnered. But if your life revolves around being partnered, I think you've already lost the game. You cannot dictate your one consciousness, your one life, the relationship you have with yourself on whether or not you're partnered. I really think it's incredibly dangerous to do this for yourself and for society because we've seen it play out in society. You want to help society? Stop being bitter that you're single. You really care about society? Stop focusing on being partnered because truly like it is impacting society because the bitterness and the resentment is showing up because of men. So you're right. 
the world is afraid of single men because statistically you were the ones shooting down women. You were the ones beating women. You were the ones. So again, like stop doing that. Or the men, the men who are doing this, make it clear you are not like them. But the way you're talking right now makes you sound like you're on the verge of being those men. Instead of saying, that is the wrong way to do it. We shouldn't be doing this. We should be doing something different. So again, when I hop into these bubbles and they're talking about society, they're not talking about society. If you cared about society, you yourself as a single man would stop being bitter because you should know that that bitterness leads to a society of bitter men that even Jordan Peterson is literally terrified of single men because their bitterness turns to violence. The problem is with your relationship with being a bitter single man and you keep expecting everyone else to fix your problem. And I just, I can't stand for that when I know it's not that. Every book on philosophy, even religion talks about this. You are the problem. It is about you. It is not about the world. It is about you. You are, the world is a reflection of us as a collective, right? What's wrong with you? Why haven't you done this shit yet? Like tons of other people will look at you like, what's wrong with you? Why haven't you done this shit yet? So yeah, like people definitely uh, look at it, you differently if you're not it, married by someone. Yeah, like, it's like streamers, all. streamers, like, like I'm, I'm thinking, like, I think especially men, I think it's true. Like, like streamers that like, like in this sphere, they like, talk about their opinions and shit. Like, uh, like, like most of them have girlfriends, but like, you like you can just imagine like your perception like that the shit like a lot of men say like if they said it and they also were single and it's like that you sound way worse now bro it's like it's I yeah you, some, I sometimes wanna, you need a woman hold on if i can make this last point just guy. very quickly because i, I want to give very Brittany quickly. a chance to have her say so, because we do have a line and i want to make sure we get to as many people that's as true so i'm really sorry so i'm gonna make this very quick Sometimes you literally need a partner to validate your opinions, to validate your worth as a man. That's very important. In fact, very many people will discount what I say by simply, well, where's your woman? You just need a woman present just to verify, just to exist as a male having an opinion. It's something I've experienced. What, for you. what are you having an opinion about? What are you having an opinion about? Right? Here's my line. So. What, what is happening, I think, in people's minds is, and I, I, so like, I uh, I think Brittany was sort of saying this like uh or maybe I'm just like getting tired, but um so may, forget I said that, but I I like so if so I don't know if you're single or not, but like 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 so if you're single, then when people hear you say like uh An opinion. have these very strong opinions about women, <laughs> then what they're doing is they're like. So what is, is this is why he's single. Like they're trying to figure out like what is it that's making you single. Uh, and, and so they they're they're. But he doesn't even know why he's single. Like he doesn't even believe why he's single. He thinks it's because of X, Y, Z. But is it is that objective or is it your subjective bias that's telling you this is why I'm single? Right. When Elliot Roger went on his shooting spree, was he single because he was ugly? No. Was he single because he was insane? Yes. And that's the thing. He blamed other people, but he was the one to blame. Elliot Roger was known as like, quote unquote, attractive because it's not about how you look. It's about who you are. And people won't accept that now. Or it's not who you are. It's because you haven't found the right person. You yourself are not picking the people. Because remember, lots of my friends are single and it's because they also don't like anyone who's approaching them. So it's a combination of either it's you and you need to work on some stuff or you're just not finding the person. So if you have stuff to work on, work on it. If it's if it's you not finding the person, then what's why be bitter? Who cares? You'll find them when you find them. Don't you have other things going on? And if you don't, maybe you evolve to not procreate so your genetics don't continue. Because genuinely, I don't know how you're going about life only caring about being partnered. And the benefits you get from society, they're not even worth it for most single people. Like, I don't even understand why you need them. But then again, I don't think I'm owed anything. I think I can only hope that society would move in a direction of being healthy and happy and kind and more thoughtful for the people in that society. But every society is different. Trying to fit everything you say into a puzzle piece and see if that fits into their imagination of why you're single. Okay. I want to give Brittany, just real quick, I want to give Brittany a last say, the, anything else you wanted to bring up before we, again, cycle. So, go ahead. Yeah, I think um, 
I think it's really important to know why we need to be partnered. And if it's just for society, I think that's really unhealthy. I think I'm not convinced that society knows what's good for us more than we do. And I think I believe in your ability to have agency over your consciousness and to say like, I, I, I know why I'm single. I know why I haven't dated. I know why I've been a virgin until I'm 50. I know why this. And honestly, I know that I'm a good person and I'm well-rounded. And until that person comes into my life, I'm not going to let society like denigrate me or tell me I'm degenerate because this is my journey, right? Like I believe in your agency to have a unique story. And I think if you are in a society that you don't feel comfortable in, obviously as an immigrant background, I would tell you to move. But if that's not plausible, I would tell you to like radically accept that the, this is a part of making a balance between you and the world, right? But I just don't think you need to have a partner to be validated. I think that's just so antiquated. But I mean, if you wanna live thinking that's objective, you can, but it's just not, it's a construct. And so like to break that construct, it takes a lot of self-awareness, right? Like, I just think you're better than that. Fair enough. Um, anything Based. else before we let Brittany go? I'm a, no, I'm a I, I find it, oh, okay. I, I mean, I find it interesting that that's a construct that we have to, to break. But if I say the construct of women appreciating men, again, people want to argue with me. I, it doesn't I, well, make sense. Women should appreciate men. Does it make any sense? We should appreciate individuals we have a relationship with. Why would we appreciate men does that mean i have to appreciate hitler does that mean i have to appreciate elia roger does that mean i have to appreciate like my rapists no we can't just appreciate men men aren't a people they're just a group i appreciate whites i appreciate blacks what does that mean does that not sound cringy and very toxic to anybody else that sounds so we should appreciate women why we should appreciate individuals that we have relationships with and we should appreciate they were alive and we should appreciate a lot of things. But why would we appreciate groups of people? I really appreciate the vegans. It's like, what? I really, why would we appreciate men? It doesn't make sense. I appreciate my father and I appreciate my brothers and I appreciate my husband, but that's because I have a relationship with them. But why would I default appreciate men or women? Like, what is this fantasy of like, I never think I really wish men would appreciate me. Why? Who are, why? Who? Why? Right? I just think it's so un irrational. And these people are sitting here being like, I'm like, this is rational. It's so irrational. It makes no sense to say that. Well, just, just to Brittany's <laughs> point, she was saying like, find your own people and like, it's up to uh, society. You don't, you don't have to do things that society wants. If you grow up in a community and you care about the people in your community. So like, I'm Arab. So in my in Arab, I am also Arab community when you're growing up as a 31 year old single guy, it's like you get looked at as almost not an adult. Yes, because you're kind of not grown in a way. I think I'm not grown in a way. My parents look at me because I don't know home as not grown in a way. And I think that's true. Like, I think in a lot of ways I'm not fully grown, but so. And the same thing goes for like women, too. And even when you're in a relationship until you have a kid. Right. It's almost like you have to achieve these goals before you get looked at as. So I may be looked at as a person right now, but I'm not fully an adult because I don't have the response. Yeah, but that's fine. I think that's fine. Like, I also do that to myself. Like, I don't feel grown, grown. I know I have so much more to do. I can't wait till I'm 50 and 60 and 70 and I'm grown, grown, grown. But of course, I'm not fully grown yet. And I'm 34. <clears throat> I have a full-time job in my own apartment. Like, so like, you know what I mean? But also like, I am also Arab. You think I didn't have to fight these constructs too. And you know, the construct really is that this is my family and this is my community, but I don't want to be a part of this community full-time. I love them, but I don't want to be identified through this community full-time. If you want to be, then why aren't you adhering to the standard? And if you are waiting for the right person, maybe you should be the example in your community to shift the narrative that it means something. But also, is it so wrong to not be considered grown? I I don't know. Like, I don't see the, 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 the you know, because the government's going to see you as grown. And if your community doesn't, like, they're kind of right to a certain extent. But also, they are not going to feel that way when you're 50, dude. Like, they only feel that way because you're you're young. You're a kid. Like, in the same way that we're all kind of kids. But, like, eventually you'll be grown. Eventually you'll have enough grown, you know. And if they do continually look at you like you're not, that's on them. Change your community standard. Maybe your community is wrong. Maybe your community is wrong responsibilities the tasks the cares that i would have to have if i had a like a, a, in a marriage and then the same i would gain more respect when i have a kid because then i have all these responsibilities that and I'm that's why people are out here just making babies just getting married just for the status it's so shallow
It's so unethical. How unethical that y'all are getting married and having kids for the status. And that's my argument. So when I come into these bubbles, okay, this is the epiphany I had. I'm coming into these bubbles and they can't hear themselves. They have no fucking tools to understand what they are saying out loud. You were literally saying, I am seeking status. And I am saying, I am seeking joy. You see how we're playing two different games? And it's my fault for coming into these bubbles and thinking that any of them want to be joyful. How silly I was to think anyone wanted to be joyful. Now, the hope is someone in the audience does. The hope is somebody who's listening wants to be joyful. But if you're here to reach a status point, if you want status, we're not playing the same game. And that's the difference. We're not playing the same game. So that was the epiphany that I had that I need to remind myself that I'm jumping into their bubble. And the way, the reason they're looking at me like, what are you talking about? Is because we're just playing different games and that's okay. I'm not moralizing it. I don't want to moralize. I don't want to say they're bad people. I want to say that this is the problem with society. The society is playing a game of status and it's not seeking joy. You know, like I said, I was watching Dr. K on the co ice coffee hour. And again, there's this American individual concept that's separate from what he was talking about in India, which again, when you're talking about the society, you're talking about the individuals in society, but just like this Arab guy said, right? I'm Arab, he's Arab, I get it. You're part of a community, so the community expects you to be a certain way, and then you feel bad you're not living up to that standard. That is one way to be an individual within a community. But that person isn't an individual, though I'm sure they consider themselves one, in the way that I'm talking about, a specific consciousness, which is just to do your own thing and still love your communities, but not do it full time. To say to your communities, I love you, I'm glad I was born into this community, but also it doesn't serve my joy and I don't want to spend time in it full time. Even though it does give me less time with my family and friends, I notice that I'm more joyful when I have less time with them. I love my family and friends. I love them, but I am more happy when I have a balanced relationship with them than when I'm with them 24 seven. And that's because I am truly what I would call an individual or a specific consciousness. You know, these people brag, conservatives, progressives, everybody will brag that they're individual thinkers, they're not a part of a herd, they're not sheep mentality. But the dilemma is like, if you're a part of a community and you identify with that community and you adhere to the rules of that community, you are a herd animal. And that's fine. That's absolutely valid. I'm not moralizing it. But know who you are in the story. You are not the anime character that goes on a great adventure solo for 20 years. You are the person that stays in the village, helps the village, and like is a part of the community, right? You are the person whose identity is rooted in other people, and that's fine. But not everybody is like that. Not everybody wants that. Not everybody is eager to do that. And so again, I do think the problem with society is that it thinks everyone wants what everyone wants. And none of us want the same thing. The only thing I would say we probably universally want, give or take a really rare anomaly in the human um, uh, population, is probably some level of contentedness. So that level of contentedness, I think, is probably universal. It just looks different. The results look different. You know, how are you content will look different to other people. So just a friendly reminder as we go along on this journey that everyone is going to go through life differently. But I want people to hear themselves when they say, I'm in a community. You're literally saying, I am going to live my life for other people, but not in the great sacrificial way at a detriment to yourself and probably all of society because you'll become bitter and frustrated when you don't adhere to the community standard instead of radically accepting that maybe it was never about your, like maybe you were never going to find joy here. You know what I mean? Okay, that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for watching today's podcast. I really think this is an important conversation. And I know this felt more like a reaction video, but I really think that this is the conversation that is gonna change the way that I even make content. I wanna help you be a specific consciousness, whether you're a two or a five, I don't care. I want you to be like in such a good relationship with your consciousness that when society tells you this is how you be a good person, this is how you find your joy, you're allowed to actually ask yourself if that's true. Because I don't want you trapped in this cycle of why don't I ever fit in when you were never meant to in the first place. All right, guys, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense, I've been the
nothing but blood So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.